Story 1. I've been to a few weddings, and they've all followed the same kind of formula. There's no huge venue, no big guest list, no bridal party lined up in matching outfits. It's usually just the couple, a handful of close family members and friends, and some guy who's there to do the legal work. The ceremony itself tends to be quick. An exchange of vows, a few signatures, and it's all done. After that, there might be a simple meal, maybe a small celebration at home or in a local restaurant. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. There's a certain charm in the simplicity, in the lack of pressure to create the perfect wedding day. But sometimes I can't help but feel like something is missing. When I hear about the way weddings are often done in other places, particularly in places like the U.S., it's like looking into a different world. The idea of a wedding being the biggest day of your life is so foreign to me. There, weddings seem like these epic joyful events where the entire community gets involved. There are grand entrances, emotional speeches, carefully curated decor, and moments designed to take your breath away. The bride and groom spend months, sometimes even years, planning every last detail. From the color scheme to the flowers to the perfect song for the first dance, everything has meaning. It's not just about getting married. It's about creating memories that everyone will look back on for years. It's the kind of day that people dream about, where all eyes are on the couple, and the world stops just to celebrate their love. In my experience, though, weddings don't hold that same level of significance. Sure, they're important. They mark a major life transition, but there's a different attitude toward them here. They're just another step in life, not necessarily something to be glorified or made into a grand spectacle. And I think for some people, that's perfectly fine. They don't need all the bells and whistles. But I've always wondered what it would be like to experience something bigger. Something that feels more celebratory, more full of life and excitement. The few weddings I've attended have all blurred together in my memory because they were so similar in their simplicity. I can barely remember the details of who got married or where the ceremonies took place. They just weren't events designed to be remembered in that way. I often hear people reminiscing about weddings they've been to in the U.S., telling stories of how beautiful the bride looked, how emotional the groom was, or how fun the reception turned out to be. There's laughter, music, and dancing until late into the night. People talk about how much effort went into the wedding, how it brought together friends and family who hadn't seen each other in years. It sounds like so much more than just a legal procedure. It's an experience. But in my country, weddings are often treated like a formality. They're a necessary step to legally bind two people together. But the emotional weight of the day doesn't seem to be the same. It's not something we talk about as the best day of our lives. It's just something that happens. The couple gets married, the legal paperwork is done, and life moves on. The idea of having a big, show-stopping celebration seems unnecessary to most. It's more about the practical side of things and less about creating a magical experience. I suppose part of this comes down to culture. In some places, the idea of marriage and weddings is steeped in tradition, and the ceremony itself is meant to be a reflection of that. Here, however, it feels like the focus is more on what happens after the wedding, on building a life together rather than on the wedding day itself. And while that's certainly a valid approach, it leaves me wondering if we're missing out on something by not allowing ourselves to indulge in the joy and excitement that a grand wedding can bring. Story 2. It all started with something as simple as the Christmas tree behind the altar. My wife and I had spent months planning every detail of our wedding. We didn't have a big budget so she had poured her heart into crafting and saving to make sure everything looked just the way we wanted. One of those details was the Christmas tree. Since we were getting married in December, it felt festive to have it as part of the decor. But we had one specific request. We wanted the tree to be decorated only with red ornaments. It was a small thing, really, just a way to keep the color scheme consistent with the rest of the wedding. We'd planned it all out, and everything was falling into place. Enter my mother-in-law. She'd taken on some responsibilities for helping with the setup, which we appreciated, but things quickly went south when she started putting different colored ornaments on the tree. Gold, silver, green, you name it. It didn't fit with what we had planned. And while I knew she probably meant well, it wasn't what my wife and I had envisioned, so I approached her and politely asked her to stick to just the red ornaments. It seemed like a simple enough request, but that's when everything spiraled out of control. She didn't take it well. At all. When I first asked, she cursed me out, right there in front of everyone. Taken aback but trying to stay calm, I asked her again, as politely as I could, to only use the red ornaments. That's when she lost it. She yelled at me, saying she deserved more respect than that, and then unleashed a stream of expletives that left everyone around us in shock. I was stunned, trying to process how such a minor request had escalated into her full-blown fury. It got worse. 
She started screaming and cursing in front of everyone, causing a scene. Guests, family members, even the people helping with the decorations, all stopped and stared as my mother-in-law hurled insults at me. I knew there was no calming her down, so I did the only thing I could think of. I asked my wife to talk to her mother, hoping she could defuse the situation. But when my wife went to talk to her, things didn't improve. In fact, they got worse. My mother-in-law came storming back in, told me to my face that her daughter deserved better than me, and that I was a horrible person. Then, in a dramatic flourish, she announced that she was pulling her blessing from the wedding and stormed out, taking my young brother-in-law and a bunch of other family members with her. Just like that, on what should have been the happiest day of my life, my mother-in-law had turned everything upside down. I was in disbelief. I couldn't believe that something as trivial as Christmas tree decorations had led to this. But there I was, standing in the middle of the chaos she'd created, wondering what I was supposed to do next. Part of me wanted to just let her go and try to move on with the day. After the way she'd treated me and my wife, I didn't feel like I owed her anything. She had been rude, disrespectful, and cruel, and I was angry. But at the same time, I knew how much my wife had wanted her mother to be there. I knew that, despite everything, having her in the photos, even as a background figure, would mean something in the long run. So I swallowed my pride. I picked up the phone, called her, and did the hardest thing I could think of in that moment. I begged her to come back. It wasn't easy. She had treated me horribly, and my instinct was to cut her out entirely. But I kept thinking about my wife, and how this day was as much about her as it was about me. I didn't want her to look back on her wedding day and feel the sting of her mother's absence, no matter how much drama she had caused. I apologized, even though I wasn't the one who should have been apologizing, and I did everything I could to convince her to come back. Eventually, she did return, though the tension in the air was thick for the rest of the day. It wasn't the joyful reunion I'd hoped for, but at least she was there. I knew it wouldn't fix the damage that had been done but I figured it would be easier to deal with her being in the photos than trying to explain why she wasn't there at all. Story 3. One of the most bizarre wedding stories I've ever heard happened when I was just 13 years old. And it's still something I think about from time to time, because honestly, it's the kind of thing that sticks with you. It wasn't my wedding, of course. I was just a kid, but it was my friends, or rather, a wedding of someone my family knew in the community. They had decided to hold the ceremony by the docks near where I lived a spot that had sentimental value to the couple since they'd spent a lot of time there during their childhoods. It seemed like the perfect, picturesque location for what should have been a special day. The wedding itself started out like any other. Friends and family gathered by the water. The atmosphere was calm, and the mood was set for a beautiful ceremony. Everything seemed perfectly normal, almost peaceful, as the couple stood at the altar, ready to exchange their vows. I remember standing there, watching, not expecting anything unusual to happen. Then came the moment for the I do's. It was the usual script. The officiant asked the bride if she took the groom to be her lawfully wedded husband. And that's when everything went completely off the rails. Instead of saying I do, the bride, without missing a beat, said, I object to this cow, in a voice so full of disdain that it left everyone stunned. Before anyone could process what she'd just said, she turned, and in one swift motion, shoved the groom straight into the water. The sound of the splash echoed across the docks. Everyone froze in shock. You could hear gasps from the guests, but no one moved, almost as if we couldn't believe what had just happened. I remember my own mouth hanging open, watching as the groom resurfaced, sputtering in disbelief as he tried to make sense of the situation, dripping wet and completely blindsided. The bride, on the other hand, was completely unfazed. Without a word, she turned on her heel, walked straight to a car that was waiting nearby, got in, and left. Just like that. It all happened so fast, within seconds. One moment she was at the altar, and the next, she was gone. Disappearing down the road as if the whole wedding had never even happened. And that was it. She was gone. Just like that. No explanation, no apology, nothing. She never came back. In fact, none of us ever saw her again after that day. It was as though she vanished from all of our lives in the same dramatic way she had ended that wedding. For a long time after, people speculated about what had really happened and why she'd done it, but no one seemed to have any answers. It was just one of those bizarre moments that didn't make sense, and I don't think anyone will ever fully understand what went through her mind. As a 13-year-old, witnessing something like that was surreal. Weddings were supposed to be joyful, happy occasions, not scenes of total chaos. It was the first time I'd seen something like that, and to this day, it remains the most unforgettable wedding story I've ever been a part of. 
It's the kind of story that, when I tell it now, people think I'm making it up or exaggerating. But no, it really happened. A bride objected to her own wedding, pushed the groom into the water and drove away, never to be seen again. It's something that could have been straight out of a movie, but it was real life, and I was there to see it. Story 4. A good friend of mine, let's call her Blonde Doctor, was about to get married in just five days. The issue? I really wasn't a fan of her groom. He'd made some questionable choices in the past, and I couldn't help but feel uneasy about the whole situation. Still, I kept my opinions to myself, not wanting to interfere. One afternoon, I was chatting with a different friend, lightheartedly venting about the upcoming wedding and joking about ways to stop it. In the spirit of fun, I sent this friend a link to a WikiHow article titled How to Stop a Wedding. It was purely for laughs, of course, and I didn't actually plan on crashing anyone's big day. But fate had other plans. When I returned to my text conversation with Blonde Doctor, my heart sank. I had accidentally sent her the WikiHow link instead of the friend I was joking with. There it was in her message thread, a step-by-step -step guide to derailing her wedding. My stomach twisted as I stared at the screen. How do you even recover from that kind of blunder? As you might expect, the next few days leading up to the wedding were beyond awkward. She didn't say much about it, but the tension was palpable. I attended the wedding as planned, smiling politely, though it felt like there was an unspoken elephant in the room. Everyone else was celebrating the love between the happy couple, but I couldn't shake the feeling that this relationship wasn't built to last. Two years later, my instincts turned out to be right. They divorced. The groom's less-than-ideal behavior continued throughout their marriage, and eventually, blonde doctor decided she'd had enough. She reached out to me not long after the split, and we reconnected stronger than ever. We even laughed about the WikiHow incident, though back then it was anything but funny. And in case you're wondering about the nickname, blonde doctor is indeed a Scrubs reference. It's a habit of mine to refer to people using pop culture characters when I'm telling stories especially when I want to keep their real identities private. You'll also hear me throw around keys or sows from time to time when referring to certain individuals, but that's a story for another day. Story 5. While this isn't exactly an objection, it's too funny not to share. When my dad married my stepmother, my little brother, who was just a toddler at the time, decided to steal the spotlight in the most unexpected way. Anyone who knows him can tell you that he had the most hilarious, contagious laugh the kind that could light up a room and make anyone within earshot crack up, no matter the situation. As the ceremony progressed, everything was going smoothly. That was until we reached the objection part, the part where the officiant asks if anyone has any reason the couple shouldn't be married. Cue the dramatic pause. The room fell into a perfect, respectful silence. And then it happened. Out of nowhere, my little brother let out this huge, gleeful belly laugh. It echoed through the room breaking the tension in the most ridiculous way possible. Of course, everyone turned to look at him, but he wasn't done. Apparently, his own laughter was the funniest thing he'd ever heard because after that, he couldn't stop. He'd laugh, take a breath, laugh harder, and then start the whole cycle over again. And just like that, the wedding was derailed by a toddler who found the moment way too amusing. The rest of us, of course, didn't stand a chance. His laughter was so infectious that pretty soon, everyone in the room, from the bride and groom to the guests, was shaking with uncontrollable laughter. It was as if someone had flipped a switch and we were all caught in the same loop. The officiant tried to maintain composure, but even he couldn't hold it together. We had to actually pause the entire ceremony because no one could get through it with a straight face. My brother had unknowingly transformed a solemn moment into one of the most joyful memories. There we were, all dressed up, Tears of laughter streaming down our faces, trying to pull ourselves together for long enough to let my dad and stepmom finish saying their vows. It was pure chaos. Story 6. When my cousin married her wife, what should have been a joyful celebration took a heartbreaking turn. Like many of us, she had held on to the hope that her parents, grandparents, and some of the older family members had finally come around to accept her relationship. The fact that they had shown up at the wedding seemed like a step in the right direction a sign that they were ready to support her on one of the most important days of her life. For a while, everything felt normal. The ceremony began, and though her parents and grandparents remained quiet, they were there, seated among the guests. My cousin, who had been so nervous about whether they would attend, was clearly relieved to see them. She was practically glowing, convinced that their presence meant they had, at last, decided to set aside their disapproval and show their love for her and her new wife. But then, without warning, it happened. As the ceremony reached its emotional peak, her parents, grandparents, and a few other older relatives 
slowly stood up from their seats. There was no scene, no dramatic outburst. They didn't shout objections or try to stop the wedding. Instead, they simply walked out. Their silent departure hung heavy in the air, more powerful than any words could have been. The message was clear. They hadn't come to support her. They had come to make a statement of their own. My cousin was devastated. She had interpreted their attendance as a change of heart, a gesture of acceptance. But in reality, it was nothing more than a painful trick, a symbolic way for them to express their continued disapproval right at the moment when she was most vulnerable. The rest of the guests could see the heartbreak etched on her face, and there wasn't much anyone could do to ease the sting of such a public rejection. Despite this, the ceremony continued. Her wife, ever the steady presence, held her close, whispering words of comfort, trying to shield her from the hurt as best she could. But the damage was done. What should have been a day filled with joy and love was clouded by the bitter actions of family members who couldn't see beyond their own biases. Story 7. This is the kind of wedding story that makes you think truth is stranger than fiction. My dad's brother's wife, so my mom's sister-in-law, decided to stir up some serious chaos right before the big day. For reasons I still don't fully understand, she took it upon herself to call both the church and the reception venue, claiming that the bride and groom had split up and the wedding was off. As you can imagine, the venue didn't question her. After all, why would they? She was a close family member. And who else would make such a call if it weren't true? They immediately sprang into action, canceling everything. The caterers, the DJ, even the decorations, all gone. It was as if the wedding had been wiped off the map with a single phone call. The only reason anyone found out was pure luck. Another guest, who had planned to check out the parking situation at the venue, showed up early and was surprised to hear the wedding had been called off. Confused, he called my dad to confirm, which set off a frantic chain reaction. My dad quickly got in touch with the bride and groom, and that's when everyone realized what had happened. Total panic mode ensued. The couple had no idea that their wedding had been canceled behind their backs, and now, just days before the ceremony, everything was in disarray. The venue had canceled all the vendors, and they didn't think to double-check with the bride and groom because, well, who would? In the end, the wedding did go ahead. But it was nothing like what had originally been planned. With just a couple of days to pull everything back together, they had to scramble. The food was completely different than what they'd chosen, as the original caterer was no longer available. The photographer was a last-minute hire, and some of the decorations they'd carefully planned were nowhere to be found. Despite the mess, the venue worked tirelessly to make things right. They managed to piece together a new setup, and by all accounts, they did a pretty good job. The wedding might not have been exactly what the couple envisioned, but it was still a beautiful day, filled with love and laughter. The guests wouldn't have known the difference if you hadn't told them. Of course, the whole thing left a bad taste in everyone's mouth, especially when it came to my dad's brother's wife. Her bizarre decision to cancel the wedding without consulting anyone left the family in a bit of a rift. But if there's one thing weddings and family drama go hand in hand, it's unpredictability. Story 8 Looking back, it's no surprise my whole family and every single one of my friends objected to my marrying my first husband. I was young, impulsive, and thought I knew better. So naturally, we eloped after just two months of knowing each other. We made the decision on a whim, fueled by rebellion and the belief that love conquers all, even if that love was for a guy fresh out of rehab, who was a full decade older than me. In hindsight, it was clearly not the wisest choice. But hey, I was 19, and like many 19-year-olds, I thought I had it all figured out. I brushed off everyone's concerns, convinced that they just didn't understand. And to be honest, I didn't really understand either. I ignored the glaring red flags, clinging to the hope that things would work out, that I could fix him, or that somehow we'd beat the odds. What followed was five miserable years that I can only describe as a slow-motion disaster. He relapsed repeatedly, and I found myself caught in the exhausting cycle of his addiction and erratic behavior. It wasn't just the substance abuse, though. There were times when he became violent, and one manic episode stands out in my mind when he choked me on the floor, leaving me gasping for air and realizing just how deep I'd sunk into a dangerous situation. As if that weren't enough, I later discovered that he also had hepatitis C, something he conveniently left out of the conversation until it was too late. He drained my bank account twice, cheated on me more times than I could count, and would vanish for days or weeks at a time with no explanation. The emotional and financial toll was devastating. I felt like I was living in a constant state of fear, shame, and confusion, stuck in a toxic marriage that I didn't know how to escape. Part of me wishes I had divorced him sooner. I sometimes wonder how different my life would have been if I had listened to my family and friends from the start, 
or if I had found the courage to leave him after the first sign of trouble. But at the same time, I believe everything happens for a reason, and those terrible years ultimately led me to where I am now. If the timing had been different, I might never have met the true love of my life. Story 9 When I was around seven years old, I attended a church wedding with the family of the bride. My mom's boyfriend at the time was the bride's brother. I had dressed up in my finest attire, hair neatly done, and I was determined to be on my very best behavior. I knew this was an important day for the couple and I was ready to sit quietly through the ceremony, soaking in the atmosphere of love and celebration. Everything was going smoothly. The church was serene, the vows were being exchanged, and you could practically feel the weight of the moment as the officiant asked that iconic question, if anyone objects, speak now or forever hold your peace. And that's when it happened. My butt objected, loudly. Without any warning, I let out the loudest fart I've ever produced in my life. The sound echoed through the quiet church, bouncing off the walls in a way that made it impossible to ignore. The silence of the sacred moment was shattered, and for a split second I prayed no one would notice. But oh, they noticed. At least four or five rows of people in every direction turned around to stare at me, faces filled with surprise, amusement, and barely contained laughter as they tried to figure out if they'd really just heard what they thought they had. The awkwardness of the situation hit me hard, and I could feel my cheeks burning with embarrassment, but I managed to keep my composure, until someone in the row behind me whispered, she's going to need a new dress. That was it. I lost it. I couldn't hold in my laughter any longer, and I erupted into giggles. The combination of mortification and hilarity was too much to handle. The people around me were trying to stifle their own chuckles, and soon, I wasn't the only one shaking with laughter. The good news? The bride and groom standing up front and fully absorbed in their vows didn't seem to hear a thing. The ceremony continued without a hitch, and the couple remained blissfully unaware of the objection that nearly stole the show. But for everyone within earshot, it became the unforgettable moment of the day. The perfectly timed interruption that had the whole church giggling in secret. Story 10. My uncle, who has always been incredibly supportive of my wife and me, played a small but meaningful role in our wedding day. He's one of those characters you can always count on to bring a little wisdom and a bit of craziness to any situation. The day of our wedding, we had chartered a riverboat for the ceremony, where we were going to be married by the captain. My uncle had kindly offered to drive me to the venue, and everything was going according to plan, or so I thought. As we were driving just a block away from the riverboat, he suddenly pulled the car over and turned to face me with a serious look in his eyes. This wasn't the typical wedding day jitters talk. I could tell he had something important to say. Are you 100% sure you want to go through with this? He asked. If you have any doubt, now's your chance. I'll go back to the ceremony, handle everything for you, and you won't have to go through with it if you're not ready. It wasn't a question of him being rude or trying to talk me out of marrying my wife. Far from it. He loved both of us deeply and was only looking out for my best interest. He just wanted me to know that if for any reason I wasn't absolutely certain, I had an out. No pressure, no judgment, just an open door if I needed it. I paused for a moment to reflect, but deep down I already knew my answer. I looked back at him and said with complete confidence, I'm ready. I'm 100% sure she's the one. Without skipping a beat, he smiled, put the car in drive, and we headed to the ceremony. He never questioned my answer or brought it up again. He wasn't trying to plant seeds of doubt. He just wanted to make sure I was certain before taking such a big step. Now fast forward 11 years and my wife and I are still happily married. My uncle remains a big part of our lives, just as he was that day, always offering advice, humor, and support when we need it. We look back on that moment and laugh, grateful for his willingness to look out for me in his unique, slightly unconventional way. Story 11 While my mother-in-law didn't object during the wedding itself, she definitely made her feelings about me clear in the lead-up to it. She never liked me, and right before the big day, she tried to convince her daughter not to go through with the marriage. It wasn't exactly subtle either. There were plenty of moments where she made her disdain known, both behind my back and sometimes even to my face. Still, despite her best efforts, I married her daughter, and we've built a great life together. Four kids later, and 14 years into our marriage, my MIL now acts like none of it ever happened. She pretends as if all those hurtful comments and attempts to sabotage the wedding were erased from memory. It's almost as if she thinks I've forgotten, or maybe she hopes I'll let it go. But while I'm not petty enough to hold a grudge and be openly mean to her, I'll admit I'm petty enough to never forget what she did. At this point, though, it doesn't really matter. She's old, she lives far away, and honestly, 
The relationship she could have had with both of us was ruined a long time ago. Sure, we're civil, and I'm not one to stir the pot, but there's always this underlying tension, at least on my end, because of how she acted back then. I've accepted it for what it is, but it's still hard not to wonder how much better things could have been if she'd just given us a real chance from the start. What's funny now, though, is that her so-called golden boy, the other son-in-law who could do no wrong in her eyes, isn't exactly shining anymore. For years, my M.I.L. practically worshipped the ground he walked on. I always called him Golden Boy because no matter what he did, he was untouchable. Meanwhile, I was always the one getting side-eyed, and he could do no wrong in her eyes. But recently, things have shifted. The cracks in their perfect relationship have started to show, and now it looks like they're just about done with him. He's on the outs, and it's clear that he's no longer the favorite. I have to admit, it's kind of satisfying to watch it all unfold. After years of being the one under constant scrutiny, sitting back and seeing the golden boy lose his status is a bit of poetic justice. Of course, I never said anything about it all these years. I kept my head down, did my thing, and focused on my family. But deep down, I always saw through the act. I knew he wasn't as perfect as they made him out to be. Now I'm just quietly enjoying the irony of it all. Story 12. I grew up in a strict, fundamentalist Christian community where every decision seemed to be controlled by religious rules and expectations. One of my closest friends, who was like a sister to me, fell deeply in love with a man she wanted to marry. Unfortunately, her parents had other plans. They were furious because they had been preparing an arranged marriage for her. The idea of her choosing her own path didn't fit into their rigid worldview, so they reacted harshly. They locked her inside their home for months, determined to stop her from following her heart. It was incredibly painful to watch. Every day I saw how much she was suffering, cut off from the world and the person she loved. I knew I had to help her. After weeks of planning, we finally figured out a way to get her out of that house. I helped her escape, and she immediately ran to be with the man she loved. Shortly after, they decided to marry in a small, intimate ceremony. Something modest but meaningful. Despite everything, she invited her brother to the wedding. She used to be so close to him, but he had sided with their parents when it came to her relationship. Still, she hoped he would show some kind of support, or, at the very least, come to witness her happiness. However, instead of a warm reunion, her brother showed up in all black, including sunglasses, which made him look more like a bouncer than a wedding guest. He stood there in the back, glaring at everyone with a permanent scowl. His body language screamed anger and resentment, and it was clear that he had no intention of giving his blessing. Before the ceremony, my friend and her soon-to-be husband had specifically asked the pastor to skip the traditional, does anyone object? Part of the vows. They didn't want to give anyone, especially her family, a chance to derail the wedding. But her brother, realizing the pastor wasn't going to ask the question, decided to take matters into his own hands. In the middle of the vows, he stood up and tried to stop the wedding. He shouted something about how it was wrong, how she was making a huge mistake. But honestly, no one was paying much attention to his ranting by that point. The love in the room was louder than his objections. My brothers were at the wedding too, and they had been keeping a close eye on him, anticipating trouble. As soon as he started to cause a scene, they moved in. Calm but firm, they escorted him out of the venue before he could ruin any more of the day. I could see the heartbreak in my friend's eyes, though. No matter how much love she felt in that moment, being rejected by her own family like that was devastating. Story 13 at one of our friend's weddings, it was a day we'd never forget for more reasons than we could have imagined. The ceremony was being held in a beautiful outdoor venue, and although the skies had been a bit overcast all day, no one expected what was about to unfold. As the bride and groom stood together, holding hands and gazing into each other's eyes, the pastor reached the part of the ceremony that's always a bit nerve-wracking for couples. The does anyone object to this union moment. It's one of those traditions that, while mostly symbolic, always carries a certain weight. Everyone held their breath, waiting for the awkward silence to pass. But instead of silence, nature had other plans. Just as the pastor asked the question, a massive flash of lightning streaked across the sky, followed by a deafening clap of thunder that seemed to shake the ground beneath us. In that instant, the power in the entire venue went out, plunging everything into darkness. The storm had officially arrived, and it was clear that this wedding was about to take an unexpected turn. For a few seconds, there was total silence, save for the wind whipping outside. We could barely make out each other's faces in the gloom. But then, in the glow of a few quickly lit candles, the pastor's voice broke through the chaos. With a calm smile, he said, I'm not counting that. A ripple of laughter and relief spread through the crowd, lightening the mood. Even though the storm outside raged on, 
The wedding continued without a hitch. By the soft light of the candles, the pastor finished the vows, and the couple sealed their love with a kiss. It was a surreal and magical moment, despite the ominous weather. In a way, the storm almost felt like a blessing, as if the heavens themselves were acknowledging the power of their love. As the bride and groom walked down the aisle as husband and wife, the storm outside continued, but inside the room, all anyone felt was warmth and joy. That couple went on to share 30 years of marriage, filled with love, laughter, and their fair share of challenges as all couples face. Tragically, she passed away after a long battle with leukemia, but the love they shared never dimmed. Their wedding day, storm and all, became one of the most cherished memories in their lives, a story they would tell time and again. And then there was the wedding video. It captured everything, including the moment the storm interrupted the ceremony. The flicker of candlelight, the sound of thunder in the background, and the pastor's light-hearted joke, all of it was recorded for them to relive for years to come. That video became more than just a keepsake. It was a symbol of the strength of their love, which weathered every storm that came their way. Story 14. In the UK, wedding ceremonies follow a specific legal tradition when it comes to objections. During the vows, the officiant is required by law to ask if anyone knows of any lawful impediment that would prevent the marriage from taking place. It's an important moment, and some people might think it's an open invitation for anyone with a personal gripe to stop the wedding, but that's far from the truth. The idea behind this question is rooted in legality, not personal feelings. A lawful impediment could include things like one of the parties already being married, the couple being too closely related, or some other legal reason why their union would not be allowed under UK law. Essentially, it's about making sure that everything is above board and that there are no legal obstacles preventing the marriage. However, some people still think that if they simply don't approve of the couple or they believe one of the spouses isn't right for the other, they can stand up and object. But personal opinions and emotional objections don't hold any weight in this context. You can't just halt a wedding because you have a bad feeling about the relationship or because you don't get along with one of the partners. If someone were to try to object on those grounds, it wouldn't stop the wedding. The officiant would simply ask for legal proof of the alleged impediment. And if none were presented, the ceremony would go on as planned. So, no matter how dramatic or romanticized these wedding objections might seem in movies, the real-world version is far less dramatic. Without a legitimate legal reason, the show will go on. Story 15. At my wedding, we had a beautiful, intimate ceremony surrounded by the people who loved and supported us the most. It was a small affair, and we made the decision to skip the objection part entirely. After all, there was no reason for anyone to object, no legal hurdles, no drama, just pure joy and celebration of our union. One of the sweetest parts of the day was having my matron of honor's daughter, who was just shy of three years old, as the flower girl. She was adorable, full of energy, and so excited to be a part of the wedding. We weren't too worried about her behavior because it was such a relaxed and casual ceremony. Still. As with most things involving toddlers, you never quite know what's going to happen. About halfway through the ceremony, as we were all getting emotional and a little teary-eyed, our tiny flower girl decided to steal the show. In the middle of the heartfelt vows, just as we were lost in the moment, she suddenly shouted, Daddy, I want to go inside! Her little voice echoed through the quiet venue, causing a few chuckles from the guests. We all smiled, thinking it was just a cute interruption, but she wasn't finished. A few moments later, as we tried to regain our composure and continue with the ceremony, she loudly exclaimed, Oh, a bumblebee! The randomness of her outbursts had us all in stitches, and it instantly lightened the mood. What could have been a super serious, tear-filled moment turned into one of the funniest, most charming memories of the day. Every time she spoke, it reminded us that weddings are about joy and the unexpected little moments that make them special. Even now, years later, my partner and I still quote her at random. If we're having a bad day or things get a little too serious, one of us will mimic her tiny voice and say, Oh, a bumblebee. And it never fails to make us laugh. That little girl has no idea how she turned our wedding into something even more unforgettable. And if, by some playful twist of fate, our marriage didn't work out, I'd jokingly remind her for the rest of her life that her impromptu commentary may have been the reason. Story 16. A cousin of mine had planned a wedding to marry a guy the family just didn't have a good feeling about. From the very beginning, something felt off. He wasn't just sloppy in appearance. He had this frantic, desperate energy, like the kind of man who sees women as something to possess more than anything else. And it wasn't just one of us who felt this way. 
Pretty much the whole family had picked up on it. We're big believers in first impressions, and his wasn't a good one. Our great-grandpa, who's 98 now and a bit of a legend in the family, has always shared some old-school advice. He spent his whole life in the menswear business, and he'd always tell us women, never trust a man who doesn't care how others see him, especially when it comes to how he presents himself next to you. He believed that a man should have enough sense to look groomed and respectable, just as much as a woman does because it shows pride and care. It's not about being a dandy. It's about showing effort in a partnership. If a man couldn't bother to take care of himself, how would he care for his wife or his future children? Great-grandpa's words echoed in our minds as we all got the sense that my cousin's fiancé was going to be a leech, someone who drains their partner until there's nothing left. He seemed like the type of guy who put no effort into anything, not his looks, not his personality, and definitely not into being a good husband. The family started to see him as a ticking time bomb, one of those men who believe they deserve attention and affection without giving anything in return. We just knew it was going to end badly, but my cousin, bless her heart, refused to listen. She had always been one of those boy-crazy girls, easily dazzled by attention and convinced that this guy was her ticket to happiness after a tough breakup with an athlete, but we saw it differently. This guy was a downgrade in every way. Despite our concerns, she pushed ahead with the wedding. Eventually, the family had enough. We collectively decided that if she wasn't going to listen to reason, we wouldn't attend the wedding. And so we didn't. It was a tough call, but we trusted our instincts. Sure enough, the wedding turned out to be nearly empty. And as time went on, we learned we had been right. Not long after they married, the truth about her husband came to light. He was emotionally and physically abusive. He wanted her to be the perfect, traditional wife. But his own contributions were minimal. He worked, paid half the bills, and demanded intimacy constantly. He barely lifted a finger to make the marriage work and instead took out his frustrations on her. The situation worsened, and he began assaulting her regularly. What really broke our hearts was finding out that just three months into the marriage, he had cheated on her and given her an STD. My cousin was spiraling. She became anxious, depressed, and wasn't eating properly. She had even suffered a miscarriage and her once vibrant, stylish self had faded into someone we barely recognized. She was exhausted and clearly miserable, but she was too ashamed to admit how bad things had gotten. Eventually, our uncle got suspicious. He and his son flew across the country to check on her, and when they saw the state she was in, they pushed her to open up. She finally broke down and told them everything. That was all they needed to hear. When her husband came home, they didn't waste any time. Uncle and his son gave him a well-deserved beating before having a chat with him. Uncle made it clear that there was no future for their marriage. The damage had been done, and there was no going back. The miscarriage, the abuse, it had all taken a toll, and staying together would only make things worse. Story 17. A girl I used to work with had been through a bit of a whirlwind year. She had broken up with her longtime boyfriend, met someone new shortly after, and within a year they were engaged and already planning a wedding. Things moved quickly, but she seemed really happy with her new guy. A few months after the engagement, the wedding day came, and it was set to be a beautiful outdoor ceremony about 45 minutes outside of town. As the guests started arriving and taking their seats, everything seemed to be going smoothly. The excitement in the air was palpable, and we were all ready for the ceremony to begin. But of course, nothing ever goes quite as planned. Out of nowhere, her ex-boyfriend shows up, and it's immediately clear that he's been drinking. He looked rough, like he'd just rolled out of bed and hadn't cared about anything since. It was the kind of scene you only expect to see in movies, but here it was, unfolding right in front of us. Some of the mutual friends they had tried to go over and talk him down, gently asking him to leave. But he was having none of it. Clearly intoxicated and heartbroken, he just kept screaming that he needed to talk to her. Hannah, I love you, he kept shouting at the top of his lungs, his voice slurring and desperate. The thing was... Hannah, the bride, hadn't even arrived yet. She had no idea this disaster was brewing at her wedding venue. A crowd formed around him as more people tried to convince him to go, but instead of backing down, he started shoving people away. Things escalated fast. He was getting aggressive. And finally, one of the guests, who clearly knew how to handle situations like this, put him in a headlock and brought him to the ground. It was wild. After a few minutes of struggle, the ex-boyfriend finally gave up, realizing he wasn't going to get anywhere with this. One of their mutual friends eventually got him into their car and drove him back to town, ending the scene before things got even worse. By some miracle, this whole mess unfolded before the wedding party had even arrived. When they finally did get there, 
Hannah and her soon-to-be husband were none the wiser. The guests were asked to keep quiet about what had happened so it wouldn't spoil their day. One of her family members stood up and, in the most composed way possible, asked everyone, Obviously they're going to find out about this, but we ask that you please just wait until tomorrow to bring it up. Don't let this unpleasant person ruin their wedding day. And somehow that worked. The ceremony went off without a hitch. It was beautiful, heartfelt, and Hannah and her husband seemed blissfully unaware of the drama that had almost derailed everything. We all headed back to town for the reception, which kicked off perfectly. Everyone was dancing, laughing, and having a great time. But unfortunately, there's always that one person who can't hold their liquor or their tongue. Someone at the reception, clearly a little too tipsy, spilled the beans to Hannah about her ex's dramatic appearance earlier in the day. The mood shifted after that. You could see the vibe of the reception drop a bit, and Hannah, while still smiling, looked a little off for the rest of the night. It didn't completely wreck the evening, but it definitely put a damper on things.